And uh, um, I think with the real difference is with, uh, I think with dreams, like in this movie, he goes into dreams, but the dreams, dreams always kill their dreamers, which is a line from the movie. And each dream sequence, um, uh, the initial ones later on, it becomes more of a journey. But the premise is dream, you go into a dream, but you got to survive the dream, and that's how you escape. So the dreams are always kind of trying to kill the dreamers. But in that, it's, it becomes a repetitive cycle. And I think dreams, uh, when you dream, you actually, you tend to dream over and over and over and over again the same thing. It might slightly change from day to day, but I think the reason why this to me isn't a dream right now, sitting in this chair with you with this camera watching this here, is it just, it hasn't happened before yet. When does the dream end and when does the, the real world begin? 3D, it's, uh, it's layers. It's all about having multiple paintings interacting with each other. Take a couple before you go. What's the difference between um, depth of field and 3D? Blurry. <laughs> right, here we go. You see how the bubble's coming out? We're watching it here. And uh, the bubble is just getting bigger. It, uh, it could be coming out of the trees for all we know here. When you watch in 3D, it actually looks more real because you get the sense of it coming out of that little window toward you. And when it's about this big, then it looks like it's right where this uh, tree line is. So you actually take something like this and 3D actually makes it more real. Uh, but when you're making it, you also have to see where it is in space. Because when I first did this up, this looked like it was sitting out here. The point of this moment in the movie is that um, I'm using my thoughts to escape the prison cell, and the bubble is really my thought. In, in 2D, you wouldn't even be thinking about that. It really looks best when there's a lot on the screen. Like with regular movies, like here, you have the camera pretty much in my face, and it's very close. And uh, with 3D, you, you actually usually want to do the opposite. You want to pull back and show the big wider picture because you want to see how this sticks out here, this sticks out here, how the room forms. The problem with wide is that it's really tough to communicate a story wide. The magic of film is that you can get close. You can show the eyes. You can show what the hands are doing. You can show people interact very closely. And, um, and, and th that's really, um, especially with cheap equipment like I have, that's really tough to do. If you're going close up on a person's face and you don't have a proper macro lens, um, and even if you do, it's just, it's not, um, uh, we don't need to see a nose that looks like Mount Everest. If you're trying to communicate what's going on in a person, um, you just, you, you have to let that be the point of what you're doing in that moment. And uh, you just kind of have to let it be a person. So if this was 3D, what would it be like, a camera this close? Well, using the equipment I have, it would be um, just garbage. Uh, the one eye would be, um, without a macro lens, it's too far apart and a person would actually hurt their eyes looking at this. With a macro lens, it's still, it would look okay, but you'd be looking at it and you'd be focusing in on the depth here and the depth, instead of focusing in on what's going on in this person's face. If I was making just a 2D movie, it's very easy to crop that out. You copy a little bit from another part of the floor, kind of blur it in, correct the color. And Well, the, the problem was we didn't know our lines. Taking it out in and of itself is not difficult, um, if it was in two dimensions. What looks fine in 2D, once I put it in 3D, it the eye could see this massive hole in the floor. And although there was no problem with the color, when you looked at it in 3D, it looked like there was a big invisible magical hole that you could throw stuff in or that things could come up out of. It was, um, it was interesting and it was ridiculous. I think the 3D-ness in the movie is, um, is actually the sense of being trapped. Um, I actually, um, 
When I first went to see a full-color 3D movie at uh, an IMAX theater, um, I think it was in Calgary actually, what struck me about 3D, and especially being in a large IMAX theater where everything's really big, was how small 3D made the movie. It was, um, uh, when you go see a regular movie in an IMAX theater, everything's big and you really notice the bigness of the screen and you're looking around it and it's, you're really presented with something huge. And I found with the 3D-ness, it brought everything small, like it was happening in a little box right in front of your face. It was still impressive, still great, but I felt the 3D really made things focused and small and in a box. And in this movie, A Time of Magic, um, it, uh, it's about being in a little box, this little room, and being trapped there. And uh, people, uh, uh, we talk about 3D being in terms of depth and uh, space, and uh, those words imply bigness and largeness. And I think the curious thing about 3D is um, it, it actually makes a picture smaller and more limited. So if you're doing cut, 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 it doesn't like quick editing. It takes roughly about five seconds for even the sense of 3D to sink into your brain. So if you're doing cut, 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 it adds another dimension of limits. So if you're doing cut, 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 cut here, which I love to do, um, you just, you're, you're throwing away the 3D. The 3D actually makes, makes, makes the movie claustrophobic. It really puts it inside of a place and really makes it small. It's almost like you're fighting to break out of the 3D and go back to the more freer 2D canvas. It's weird because it seems like an evolution, but I actually think 3D is a, a devolution. It adds another dimension of limits. Okay, I need a close-up right up in your face, whatever. And you got, oh, this is in 3D. Um, okay, you, I'm going to need you to stay that far away, or we're going to need to keep this backed up here. Or uh, if I'm, uh, I'm shooting a long scene so I can get away with pulling them a bit apart, or what have you. Um, and so it's limits. And so you added a second camera and um, you start making decisions based on it, uh, which, is, um, uh, which is interesting because you think when you have first put it on, I'm just going to do things the same way as I did before, but that's not at all, uh, um, that's not at all how it works. Once you, um, once you start playing with it, it sort of takes over the whole process. It actually looks more real in 3D than it does 2D because the depth kind of takes your attention off the light on the figure. A little more willing to accept the light mismatch if you see that it's actually going further and further into the screen. And uh, going back to my earlier comment about how I was shooting this as if it were on film. Now this... Um, what do you mean shooting it as if it was film? Um, in terms of when you hit record, uh, just you're going to live with what you get. Just the idea of film, you take it and you have two strips of film, what can you do with them? Um, it's just the importance of shooting it right as opposed to fixing it. And I really wanted to try and shoot it right and fix as less as possible because I knew I'd make mistakes. I knew I'd make a ton of mistakes, but I didn't want to intentionally set myself up to make any more mistakes than I had to. So that's why I was telling myself. Just imagine it's all on film and you got to live with what you get. You can't change everything, you got to make sure it all happens as you have it. Myself, the main character, is led to believe that he can imagine his way out. And he imagines, and which again is another step of getting even smaller inside your own head. Even smaller and curl up and get even further into our head, um, often in place of actually doing something out in the real world that might actually make a real difference. If we go further into our head, we somehow become greater because of it. Uh, Is this so a dream? Is this a dream right now? It, exactly. Yeah.